Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the FSW, Harmonic Distortion Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show how to measure harmonic distortion using a Rodin Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of spectrum analyzer operation and harmonic distortion measurements. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentations Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation, and or Understanding Harmonic Distortion Measurements before beginning this presentation. As you should already know, harmonic distortion can be quantified in two ways. The first is the amplitude of the individual harmonics. These are normally reported as powers relative to the fundamental, so units are typically dBc, or decibels down from the fundamental carrier. In this example, the amplitude of the fundamental is measured as an absolute power in dBm, but the power of each harmonic is reported in dBc relative to this power. The other way that harmonic distortion is quantified is as the combined power in multiple harmonics relative to the power of the fundamental. This is referred to as total harmonic distortion and can be reported either as a percentage or in dB. There are two ways of measuring harmonic distortion on the FSW. The first is measuring the harmonics manually using markers. The second is using the FSW's automatic harmonic measurement function. Let's start by explaining the manual process. The standard spectrum markers on the FSW can be used to measure the levels of the fundamental and the harmonics. In this case, markers are normally configured as delta markers to show the difference in level relative to the fundamental. In this example, the second harmonic is down about 37 dB from the fundamental. The third harmonic is about 53 dB down, etc. Note that this method does not automatically calculate total harmonic distortion, which is a somewhat non-trivial task. Another drawback to this method is that it's very time-consuming and prone to error or measurement inaccuracy. Therefore, the FSW's automatic measurement procedure is recommended when measuring harmonic distortion. This function uses zero span mode to first measure the level of the fundamental and then each user specified harmonic individually. Parameters such as resolution bandwidth and measurement time can be either manually or automatically defined. We'll cover this in more detail in just a few moments. At the end of the measurement, the FSW displays both the level of the individual harmonics as well as the automatically calculated value of total harmonic distortion. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go step by step through how to configure and use this automated measurement. To start the automatic harmonic distortion measurement, press the measure hard key and then select harmonic distortion from the further measurements category. Note that harmonic distortion is a standard spectrum measurement and does not require any additional hardware, software, or license code. The parameters needed for a harmonic distortion measurement include the number of harmonics we want to measure, the sweep or measurement time, and whether or not the resolution bandwidth should be automatically adjusted. We'll explain the last two parameters in more detail in just a moment. Pressing the Adjust Settings button causes the FSW to automatically search for the peak, that is, the fundamental. The FSW will then use this frequency to calculate the frequency of the harmonics. And, as with most FSW measurements, the Display Config button can be used to select how the measurement results should be displayed, for example, in a trace, a table, etc. Recall that the FSW uses zero span mode to measure the fundamental and each of the n user-defined harmonics. In this example, measurements are being made up to the eighth harmonic. The harmonic sweep time parameter defines the zero span measurement duration. Longer sweep times improve accuracy, but will also increase overall measurement time. The FSW displays this as the cumulative measurement time 
that is the total time required to measure at the fundamental and at the defined number of harmonics. This is simply the number of harmonics times the measurement time, and the value is displayed in the FSW's channel bar. Here, eight harmonics with a measurement time of 50 milliseconds each yields a cumulative measure time of 400 milliseconds. Another important setting in harmonic distortion measurements is the resolution bandwidth, which can be set manually or automatically. As a general rule, resolution bandwidth should match the width of the harmonic. Here, the green shaded area represents a resolution bandwidth filter within appropriate width. Using too wide of a resolution bandwidth, as shown here in red, will result in surrounding noise power being added to the measured power of the harmonic. Another thing to keep in mind is that harmonic width increases with increasing harmonic order. For example, the third harmonic of a signal is usually three times wider than the fundamental. Therefore, the resolution bandwidth should also be increased with increasing harmonic order. We'll cover this in more detail on the next slide. And finally, remember that higher order harmonics may have very low amplitudes. And in this case, it's particularly important to choose a resolution bandwidth such that noise does not affect the results. The FSW will automatically scale the resolution bandwidth for each harmonic if Harmonic Resolution Bandwidth Auto is enabled. In this case, the target resolution bandwidth for the nth harmonic is the resolution bandwidth of the fundamental times n. For example, if the fundamental uses a 100 kHz resolution bandwidth, then the second harmonic will use 200 kHz, and the third harmonic will use 300 kHz. However, keep in mind that spectrum analyzers normally only allow resolution bandwidth to be set in certain steps. So, if the target resolution bandwidth is not available, the next largest resolution bandwidth is used. The resolution bandwidth for the fourth harmonic should be 4 times 100 or 400 kilohertz, but since this is not a standard resolution bandwidth step, the resolution bandwidth will be bumped up to 500 kilohertz. Resolution bandwidth will stay at 500 kHz for the fifth harmonic and then increase to the next available step, 1 MHz, for the sixth harmonic. If harmonic resolution bandwidth auto is disabled, then the same resolution bandwidth will be used for the fundamental and for each harmonic, regardless of order. When viewing measurement results, the zero span measurement for each harmonic is separated by red vertical lines. In this example, we see the values for the fundamental, second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics. For the fundamental in each harmonic, the values for frequency, resolution bandwidth, and measured power are provided in a table. In addition, total harmonic distortion, or THD, is automatically calculated for the measured harmonics and is given both as a percentage and in dB. One potential source of measurement inaccuracy comes from the fact that harmonics can sometimes be generated within the spectrum analyzer itself. When the device under test or dot signal enters the spectrum analyzer, it first passes through a passive input attenuator, but then passes through numerous active devices, such as mixers and amplifiers. Like all other active devices, these can create harmonic distortion. An easy way to check if this is happening is to use input attenuation. Normally, about 10 dB of attenuation is added, and the measured second harmonic level is observed. If the harmonic is exclusively from the dot, the level will remain constant. However, if the harmonic originates exclusively within the analyzer's active components, then attenuating the input signal by 10 dB will reduce the measured harmonic level by approximately 10 dB. And if the harmonic originates from both, its level will be somewhat reduced by adding input attenuation. Let's look at an example of this. Here are the levels of the harmonics without additional attenuation. Note in particular the level of the second harmonic, minus 47.5 dBc. When 10 dB of attenuation is added, 
the level of the second harmonic changes by less than 1 dB to minus 46.14 dBc. So in this case, we can say that the analyzer is adding little to no internally generated harmonic distortion to the measured signal. Let's end with a brief summary. Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzers can automatically measure and report harmonic distortion, both for individual harmonics, as well as the total harmonic distortion created by a set of harmonics. Harmonic distortion power measurements of the fundamental and defined harmonics are made in zero span mode using a configured resolution bandwidth and measurement time. In most cases, the user only needs to specify the number of harmonics of interest, although additional parameters can be manually or automatically defined as well. And finally, note that attenuation can be used to help determine if the measured harmonics are being generated within the analyzer itself. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the FSW Harmonic Distortion Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about other spectrum analyzer measurements, or about spectrum analyzers from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.